For 30 days, you must take control of your mind. It will think only about what you permit it to think. Each day for this 30-day test, do more than you have to do. In addition to maintaining a cheerful, positive outlook, give of yourself more than you've ever done before. Do this knowing that your returns in life must be in direct proportion to what you give. The moment you decide on a goal to work toward, you're immediately a successful person. You're then in that rare and successful category of people who know where they're going. Out of every hundred people, you belong to the top five. Don't concern yourself too much with how you're going to achieve your goal. Leave that completely to a power greater than yourself. All you have to do is know where you're going. The answers will come to you of their own accord. Remember these words from the Sermon on the Mount and remember them well. Keep them constantly before you this month of your test. Ask, and it shall be given you. Seek, and ye shall find. Knock, and it shall be opened unto you. For every one that asketh, receiveth. And he that seeketh, findeth. And to him that knocketh, it shall be opened. It's as marvelous and as simple as that. In fact, it's so simple that in our seemingly complicated world, it's difficult for an adult to understand that all he needs is a purpose and faith. For 30 days, do your best. If you're a salesman, go at it as you've never done before, not in hectic fashion, but with the calm, cheerful assurance that time well spent will give you the abundance in return you deserve and want. If you're a homemaker, devote your 30-day test to complete giving of yourself without thinking about receiving anything in return, and you'll be amazed at the difference it makes in your life. No matter what your job, do it as you've never done it before for 30 days. And if you've kept your goal before you every day, You'll wonder and marvel at this new life you've found. Dorothea Brand, outstanding editor and writer, discovered it for herself and tells about it in her fine book, Wake Up and Live. Her entire philosophy is reduced to the words, Act as though it were impossible to fail. She made her own test with sincerity and faith, and her entire life was changed to one of overwhelming success. Now you make your test for 30 full days. Don't start your test until you've made up your mind to stick with it. You see, by being persistent, you're demonstrating faith. Persistence is simply another word for faith. If you didn't have faith, you would never persist. If you should fail during your first 30 days, by that I mean suddenly find yourself overwhelmed by negative thoughts, you've got to start over again from that point and go 30 more days. Gradually, your new habit will form until you find yourself one of that wonderful minority to whom virtually nothing is impossible. Don't forget the card. It's vitally important as you begin this new way of living. On one side of the card, write your goal, whatever it may be. On the other side, write the words we've quoted from the Sermon on the Mount. Ask, and it shall be given you. Seek, and ye shall find. Knock, and it shall be opened unto you. In your spare time during your test period, read books that will help you. Inspirational books like the Bible, Dorothea Brand's Wake Up and Live, The Magic of Believing by Claude Bristol, Think and Grow Rich by Napoleon Hill, and other books that instruct and inspire. Nothing great was ever accomplished without inspiration. See that during these crucial first 30 days, your own inspiration is kept at a peak. Above all, don't worry. Worry brings fear, and fear is crippling. The only thing that can cause you to worry during your test is trying to do it all yourself. Know that all you have to do is hold your goal before you. Everything else will take care of itself. I got rich by the time I was 31. Here's the best advice I give my teenage friends. It was easy. What can I tell you? It was hard. No, it was easy. I'm a millionaire by 31. Let me tell you how I did it. I got three reasons why I got rich by the time I was 31. Let me give you those. Here's number one. I lived in America. I mean, how lucky can you get? America's easy. That's why everybody wants to come here. People haven't plotted and schemed for 50 years saying if I could just get to Poland, everything would be okay. No. No. 
the boat people are not desperately trying to get to Vietnam. No, they're not squeezing through the fence to try to get into Mexico. No. Neil Diamond says, looks like everybody's heading for they're all coming to America. Why? Everybody wants to come here by every means possible to get here. Why? Because America's easy. So if you go home with anything, go home with that. Mr. Rohn reminded us that America's easy. He got rich by the time he's 31. America's easy. Bangladesh is hard. <laughs> Just take that home. Here's the average yearly income in Bangladesh, $120. That would be hard. <laughs> Tell me hard versus easy. So America's easy. Cambodia would be hard. The Khmer Rouge killed two million Cambodians to make communism work. That's hard. America is easy. India would be hard. They got their challenges these days. Tough. America's easy. China would be really hard. Underline really and make a study. It's hard. America's easy. And now in about 90 days, you can have that memorized. <laughs> Tell me, that's all you need. I got rich by the time I was 31. I lived in America. America's easy. Now here's number two. I found an opportunity. That's all you got to do in America. Search for an opportunity. Take the first one, right? Try it. If that isn't it, it leads to another. One door closes, another door opens. This is what's exciting about America. It's full of opportunity. A chance to try and then what? Try again and then what? Try again, never, never run out of opportunity to try. See if you can't better your life and your health and your future and your bank account and your income, make your fortune here. I lived in America, number one, found an opportunity, number three. Number two, here's number three. I found a teacher. What a grand and glorious, unique thing that was for me at that time in my life. I found a teacher willing to teach me. And his teaching came in two parts. Here's what it was, very simple. Number one, Mr. Rohn, you have evidently messed up <laughs> between ages 19 and 25. Now, I could understand that, but he didn't leave me there. He said, now, here's the answers on how to change it all, the next six years, so that the next six years won't be like the last six. What an incredible teacher. Taught me how to have a whole brand new six years. First six, what? I messed up. Second six, what? I got it right. Second six years, I became a millionaire. During that second six years, the government was about the same. I'm telling you, interest rates were about what? The same. The pay scale was about what? The same. Lord knows my negative relatives were the same. Circumstances were about the same. The economy was about the same. The unions and their philosophy was about the same. What was going on around me was about the same. Then how come I got rich that second six years? I was not the same. I changed. <laughs> you say, well, Mr. Owen, if you can do that, can anybody do it? Yes, I invite you on that journey. Anytime you want to, you can stay the same so that the next six years will be like the last six. Take a look at the last six years. And I'm telling you, the next six years of your life is going to be like the last six. Or unless you want to count on this short list that we call not much list, most everybody's counting on this not much list. What if all of your negative relatives turned positive? What would that do for your future and your fortune? What? Not much. Not much. What if prices came down a little? What will that do for your future? I'm telling you, not much. If the economy gets a little better, what will that do? Not much. Now that the Democrats are in power, what's that going to do for your future? Not much. Uh, not much. We, got it. we could get a good debate going here. If the Republicans would have stayed in power, what would that have done? Not, not much. Hey, we could get a good debate going here. I'm telling you, it's a not much list. If you don't make plans of your own, guess what? You'll probably always fit into someone else's plans. Guess what someone else may have planned for you? Not much. <laughs> then what's going to make the difference? You're going to have to make the difference. You're going to have to take charge. Now, Mr. Schoff, my teacher, gave me a promise, and I want to give you that promise now. Here was the promise I got, and I bring it to you. Here's what my teacher said. If you will change, Mr. Rohn, he said, if you will change, everything will change for you. You don't have to change the government. You don't have to change prices. You don't have to change taxes. Forget all that. 
He said, if you will change, everything will change for you. And the first thing you start changing is what? Your philosophy. You start changing your mind. You start changing how you think. You start picking up new ideas and information. Gather new knowledge. Make better decisions about what's valuable. And I'm telling you, if you'll do that, your whole life will change. Your health will change. Your relationship with your family will change. Your ability to cope with challenges and problems will change. I'm telling you, income, promotions, all of it will change. If you will change, it'll all change. If you won't change, it isn't going to change. You can keep your fingers crossed if you want to and hope they'll straighten it out. You can wish for the wind not to blow quite as severe, but I'm telling you, wishing for the wind to change in your favor, we call naive at best. Don't do this any longer. Wish for a better wind. The key is to wish for the wisdom to set a better sail. Utilize whatever wind that blows to take you wherever you want to go. That is the philosophy I picked up at age 25, and it revolutionized my whole life. And here's what I found. I found it was easy. I got rich by the time I was 31, and it was easy. Now, here's my definition of easy. Got to jot this down. My definition of easy, meaning something I could do. I figure if it's something you can do, it's easy. Now, here's a parenthesis. Parenthesis. I worked hard at it. I found something I could do, which was easy, but I worked hard at it. I got up early and stayed up late, worked hard that six years. But what I did was easy, meaning it was something I could do. You say, well, Mr. Rohn, if it was so easy, how come everybody else around you during that six years, how come they didn't get rich? Here's why. It's easy not to. <laughs> how else would you describe it? That's it. You say, no, no. For all of the rest of them, it was hard for them and it was easy for you. That's not true. You couldn't debate me on that in front of this intelligent audience. But here's the challenge. Let me give it to you in a philosophical phrase. I tend to be a little philosophical. Here it is. The things that are easy to do are also easy not to do. That's the difference between success and failure. So you've got the choice here today of one of two easies. Easy to or what? Easy not to. I can give you in one sentence how I got rich by the time I was 31. Here it is in one sentence. I did not neglect to do the easy things I could do every day for six years. Underline, I did not neglect. That's the key. I found something easy I could do that led to fortune and I did not neglect to do it. Major reason for not having everything you want in America. Major reason for not having more of what you want in America. More health, more money, more power, more influence, more everything. Major reason why you don't get it. Simple answer, neglect. Neglect. And here's the problem with neglect. It starts as an infection. And if you don't take care of it, it becomes a disease. And here's what else is the problem. One neglect leads to another. Neglect to do wise things with your money, you'll probably neglect to do wise things with your time. Neglect to do wise things with your time, you'll probably neglect to do wise things with your business. One leads to another leads to another. Pretty soon, neglect has you by the throat, emptying your purse, emptying your heart, emptying all of your chances for equities and power and all the good things. Neglect. What if you should be walking around the block every day for your good health and you don't? I'm telling you, you're on the wrong track. You should do it, you could do it, you don't do it. That's called formula for disaster. All you've got to do is let that and a few other things accumulate for six years, and now you're driving what you don't want to drive, wearing what you don't want to wear, living where you don't want to live, doing what you don't want to do, maybe having become what you really didn't want to become. I'm telling you, that's it. Just neglect along, drift along, and it's got you by the throat. It'll take all your values, leave you with just a little bit of dust in a summer wind, and it'll soon be gone. I hope I said that well. That's it. It's where I found myself at age 25 until my teacher came along and said, Mr. Owen, up till now you've messed up. Let's see if we can't clean that up, change it all. I did. Changed my life. Not just the money, all the rest of the values that came pouring in when I understood that it was me. It was me. So take the easy approach. This stuff's easy to figure out. Getting rich is easy. I teach it to teenagers how to be rich by 40, 35. If you're extra bright, this stuff is not difficult.